All right, I'm going to do a quick video on how to factor, especially when A is 1. What that means is when the, the number in front of the, the squared terms, so we have x squared, say a squared and x squared, all the leading coefficients are 1. So typically when we're factoring, we're dealing with ax squared plus bx plus c. There's other cases that we deal with, but this video is going to focus on these. And what we're focusing on is when that a term is always 1. So really we're focusing on x squared plus bx plus c. Now, when we're factoring, there is uh, some shortcuts that allow us to get these problems done nice and easy. What we're looking for is we're looking for two numbers that multiply. So two numbers that multiply to C, but those same two numbers, those same two numbers need to add to B. So we're looking for two numbers that multiply to C. Those same two numbers need to add up to be B. And B and C are just numbers. So in this case over here, this first one, we have x squared minus 5x minus 24. Negative 24 would represent C. Negative 5 would represent B. So I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to C and two numbers that add to B. So this first problem, I have x squared minus 5x minus 24. So I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 24 those same two numbers need to add up to be negative 5. Now with these, we're gonna, we could have two negative numbers, two positive numbers, a positive and a negative, whatever. What I do is I'm going to start writing out pairs of numbers that multiply to 24. So this is a very beginner kind of move to do. Over time, a lot of students can be able to look at this and think two numbers that multiply to negative 24 and add to negative 5. If you get stuck, then you should probably start writing out the pairs of numbers until you find it. If you can't find any, Maybe it's not factorable. So like 1 times 24 would get me 24. 2 times 12. Now notice how I'm talking about positive 24. I know if I'm going to get negative 24, one of these has to be positive and one has to be negative. I'll figure that out in a second. Right now I'm just looking for pairs of numbers that give me 24. 2 and 12, 3 and 8, uh, 4 and 6. So I know one of these is going to have to be positive. One's going to have to be negative to get negative 24. The next thing I'm looking for is, can I somehow combine two of the, you know, one of these pairs to make a negative 5? So 1 and 24 is pretty far apart. 2 and 12, that's about 10 apart, so that's not going to get me there. 3 and 8 is about 5 apart. So let's look at 3 and 8. So I need negative 5 there, and I need to multiply to get negative 24. So one thing is going to be positive and one's negative. If I had a positive 3 and a negative 8, 3 minus 8 is negative 5, and 3 times negative 8 is negative 24. So my two numbers are 3 and negative 8. So here's how I'm going to write it. My factors are written with two sets of parentheses like that. Uh, since my variable is x, I'm going to have an x here and x there. And we have a positive 3, so I'm going to put x plus 3. And I have a negative 8, so I'm going to put x minus 8. Now, if I want to take the time to check my work and make sure I'm correct, this is factoring. The opposite of factoring would be taking these two and distributing them through. So taking the x times the x, the x times the negative 8, 3 times the x, 3 times negative 8. Combine like terms, and I'm going to get x squared minus 5x minus 24. So distributing would go this way. Factoring kind of undoes distributing. So it's almost like a division, per se. So that's how factoring works. So a few more examples here. I have a squared plus 7a minus 60. So I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 60. Those same two numbers need to add to 7. So it's not exactly obvious to me. So what I'm going to do is start writing out pairs of numbers that multiply to 60 and see if I could find if one of those pairs will get me to a 7. So I'm thinking 1 and 60. 2 times 30 gets me 60. 3 times 10 gets me 60. 4 times 15 gets me 60. 5 and 12 gets me 60. 6 and 10 also get me 60. So I'm looking for which of those pairs can I get to multiply to 60 and all these multiply to 60, but it also somehow have a combination of the two numbers to get a positive 7. What I'm looking at is this 5 and 12 here. 
So 5 times 12 will get me 60. I've got to figure out how can I get add 5 and 12 to get a positive 7. Well, if I have a positive 5 and a negative 12, 5 minus 12, well, that's negative 7, so that's not going to work. So maybe leave that positive and make the negative or the 5 negative. So negative 5 plus 12, that is positive 7. So I'm going to have a negative 5 and a positive 12. Since I'm dealing with A and not X, I want to pay attention to that. I'm going to have two sets of parentheses here. Put an A in each of them. And we said negative 5, so I'm going to have A minus 5. And positive 12, so I'm going to have an A plus 12 as my two factors. All right, final problem here on the video is we're going to have X squared minus 36. Wow. All right, first thing I'm noticing here is I have two terms. I'm not seeing where in the world is that middle term. Well, the middle term is there. We just don't see it. That middle term is actually just 0 because 0 times x is 0. We don't typically write 0 if it's 0. So we have that is really the setup here. Our middle term was missing, but it's really just 0x. So I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 36 but add to 0. That's numbers like 1 and 36. 2 and 18, 3 and 12, 4 and 9, 6 times 6. So I'm thinking, which pairs of these numbers will multiply to give me negative 36, but when I add them together, I get 0? Well, it is down here. We're going to have 6 and 6. So if I make one positive and one negative, 6 times negative 6 is negative 36. But 6 minus 6 is 0. So that is my two numbers I need. So my factors are going to be x plus 6 and x minus 6. Again, if I want to check this work, I could distribute this all out, combine like terms, and I will get x squared minus 36. And that is a quick video on factoring. And that only works when the leading coefficient, the number in front of your squared term, is 1. That's the only way we can do two numbers multiplied to the back add to the middle.